Iron Oxide Mod Podge Scale Measuring Device Something I'm to mix this in. up Could be very messy Yep, disaster <laughs> This stuff is really messy and I didn't really think about how I was going to get it from the point A to point B to measure it out right so I guess it is what it is so we're going to try this again I'm going to grab one half teaspoon which is about 0 0.0233 ounces well, I'm going to quickly seal this back up to try to avoid any more disasters I'm going to try to do a roughly let's call it a 4 to 1 ratio meaning 4 or two teaspoons of Mod Podge to the one teaspoon of the iron oxide and four this stuff is pretty thick I can always add water but I'm not sure how that's gonna go so this is getting me to around about all in 6.31 ounces and try to scrape the rest of that out of here all right so I'm gonna try to mix it with a straw that I cut in half here so that the stuff doesn't get trapped inside it's pretty easy to clean off your hands it seems like it has a lot of static cling but if you hit it with the soap right away before it has any chance to bond it seems to come off your uh, your hands pretty easily I don't really know what the best way to mix this is at this kind of thick consistency. Ideally I want to get as few coats as possible to have to apply. Reading online, the magnetic paints that I've seen online require six coats, which is a lot of time. It's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes between coats. And I'd really much rather make this to go faster than that. I'll probably use the paintbrush actually get a final mix down and then just get any of the clumps out with the paintbrush I'm not real worried about doing a super a super fantastic job but that's looking pretty good it's pretty thick uh, I haven't taken a magnet to it yet but I've already tested the, the bag and what I'm going to do here is I've got this board this piece of flooring I'm going to put two coats here, four coats here, and six coats here. And that's going to require about 10 to 20 minutes per coat, between coats. Try to make them as even as I can. It's going on nice and thick. I think that's that Mod Podge. Yeah, if I can get away with one coat, that would be awesome. And we'll just put the excess right here. All right, we'll wait. Uh, wait 15 minutes and have a quick test okay so while I'm waiting for this to dry I thought I would just uh, do a little have a little fun experiment to see how closely this this actually might resemble off aero fluid so I'm gonna just take some of it got just a little bit of plastic wrap so I don't have to clean this this uh, lid twice I'm gonna go ahead and put some in here just a few little bits Mod Podge has some pretty good viscosity and then I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple strong magnets. I've got some two small ones and I've got three big ones from hard drives. I'll just take a quick look and see what happens here. So uh, here we go. Whoa! Hey! How about that? But it is definitely reacting. And it's weird, the shape is not what I would expect. Let me flip the magnet over. I 
it's almost bubbling. Oh, I see. I think I see what's happening here. The the Mod Podge is kind of separating out. So that is some really strong separation. Watch that pull around. It really pulls the uh, iron oxide right out of the Mod Podge. Which shouldn't be a problem once the Mod Podge is set up. But it's creating this kind of frothy effect as it continues to get separated out of solution. I actually am surprised that this is all the height I'm getting with this particular magnet. This is a very strong magnet. But it could just be a function of the ferromagnetic nature of the iron oxide versus a, a paramagnetic uh, iron crystal. Seems actually the more I play with it though, the, the higher those little peaks get as it gets a little more, pulls itself out of solution. It's you can really see the Mod Podge is just completely separating the more, the more I uh, work it. So this is not a ferrofluid. The ferrofluid would not come out of solution like this. Uh, coat number two. Alright, so I've got two coats on here. It's dry, it's a little shiny. I have a, two different types of magnets here. I have these things, which are very, very thin. They're about a millimeter thin, maybe two millimeters thin. And they don't seem to be sticking at all. Which is annoying because these are the ones that I actually wanted to use to mount. So it looks like I have a demagnetized magnet. But anyway, I got two coats on here. Sticks, fine. It sticks pretty solid. I wouldn't say super solid. Uh, roughly the same everywhere. This is a two coats, remember. And I saw someone online do this particular test. It will not hold two sheets of paper. And I think it'll, it'll not hold one sheet of paper. So it's about where we're at. It's a fairly, you know, it's construction paper. It's not printing paper. I'm going to get a different one of these smaller magnets. I'm going to put another coat on. See what happens. All right. A um, couple quick tests. With three coats, uh, I can hold up this little itsy bitsy magnet, which I looked up. This is a one millimeter N35 grade. Uh, I can hold up one piece of paper with three coats. I haven't gotten the four coats on yet, but actually with this stronger one, I don't even know what grade this magnet is. I can hold up two. Let's see if I can hold up three sheets of this paper, which is way more than I need because I'm just trying to hang up photographs. Let me see if it works. All right, so I'm doing the fifth coat. The most that I can actually uh, hold up with this, whatever, I don't know what the grade is, magnet, is five, five pieces of paper. Okay. So I've done my initial experiments. Now I'm going to expand the two sets of things. The first thing that I did so I was wondering if I could load up some other sponge-like material, like a piece of canvas, with more, more of the magnetic material. And it seems like I get a little, with one coat, I get considerably more uh, uh, holding power. So I've got this piece right here, and it's, it's roughly equivalent to what I got with six coats. And the, and the surface is quite a bit more tacky, which means that it's not going to slide off in the same way that I've done before. So based on that, I've got one piece that I'm going to do, which is just a quarter inch piece of, you know, very cheap uh, Luan plywood. 
And then the second piece, I'm going to essentially take a, the same size and I'm going to coat this with, uh, with the canvas that's been saturated with the mixture. Uh, and the Mod Podge should actually be adhesive enough that it will create the bond between the plywood and the canvas itself. So I'm going to do both of these. I pre-drilled these holes out in the corners. This is how I'm going to hang these things. Um, I pre-drilled both holes because I, I don't, there's really no way I'm going to be able to drill through the canvas without messing it up. So I can just cut through here and put some kind of grommet in afterwards. I've also changed the ratio of my mixture. Uh, and you can see right here, I'm getting ready to mix up. This is a, this is three half cups of Mod Podge, three, I'm sorry, three quarter cups of Mod Podge and one quarter cup of the iron oxide mixture. And I'm using a little rubber spatula so I can get all the lumps out. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up, see what kind of coverage I get. That's gonna be about three quarters of a cup, maybe a quarter cup or one cup of material. We'll see what kind of coverage I get. And if I can cover the, the bare piece uh, with one cup, great. I might have some leftover to actually start working on the canvas piece.